So, uh, Marina Trani here. I work in uh, R&D yeah, on the next generation products at BAT. Uh, we're going to talk today about some of the products we're bringing in this space. Uh, some of you may know that we're quite committed to vapor. Uh, we have made a lot of progress in this category. We are big, big e-cigarettes fan. And uh, we got now our vapor brands in more than 10 markets and uh, with very, very exciting results in some countries where we got market leadership and this business is constantly growing for us. Um, but uh, we strongly believe in the power of offering consumer choices. And so uh, just recently, we started our journey into more next generation products, not just electronic cigarettes. And so today, I'd like to talk with you a little bit about our first steps into this uh, uh, tobacco heated products category. Um, you've heard some uh, of these already from my colleagues before. So uh, six months ago, we have, uh, in, in December actually, we started a test market with this product called Glow in Japan, uh, in a city called Sendai. And, uh, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we have learned and what we have done. So, uh, first, we try to understand what would consumers want from a tobacco heated type of product. And, uh, and this is, of course, an oversimplification, and, but I thought for the sake of your sanity, we keep it simple. Uh, but, uh, you know, consumers are asking for simplicity. They're asking for uh, uh, products that have got uh, harm reduction potential. They want no compromise on taste. Uh, remember, they are coming from cigarettes, which have a pretty strong sensorial experience. Uh, but importantly, they are really looking for a simple usage experience. Okay? This is a, an important barrier when consumers come from smoking cigarettes to devices. And so, based on the learning that we got from Sendai, it looks like this Glow product that we have launched may be uh, meeting some of these needs. Uh, consumers seem to be thinking this is quite a simple product to use. I'll show you why. Uh, they find the product quite satisfying. Uh, and uh, importantly, uh, especially in Japan, uh, consumers are, smokers are really worried about the people around them. They're not just worried about themselves. They really worry about the smell, uh, the toxicants for the people around them. And this is a very, very important benefit the product delivers for these consumers. Okay, so, well, what is GLOW? How does it look like? Okay, uh, we think it's beautiful. Uh, next, uh, this beautiful product. You know sometimes in England people say that it takes a village to get something done. In this case, it took the world to get this product done. Uh, we had a lot of scientists working on this and each country there highlighted in red uh, has significantly contributed to the development of this product, not only we had our internal scientists working on this, but we had all sorts of uh, experts, suppliers, design houses helping us out. How does it work? Uh, the device is one piece. Uh, it's extremely, it's got a, a new uh, to the world heating system, which is proprietary, and the device is designed so that it's gonna last all day. Okay, there's not gonna be a need to recharge this thing many, many times every day, okay? Uh, consumers, smokers, are used to their ritual, and this whole devicey thing is a bit weird, right? So the idea is to give them something that they don't need to worry about too much. Uh, has got, this device has got only one thing, which is one button, okay? There's only one thing here. And this button does everything. You use it to switch this device on and off. You use it to check how charged it is. It will tell you whether you have smoked the stick for long enough or not. Uh, guides you through usage experience. Fits in your pockets, and importantly, this device is very, very easy to clean. Okay, so you just, uh, uh, it takes a second to clean this device, and this is really important for tobacco heated products. They can get pretty gunky and nasty. Uh, then what you do, you put inside the device a stick. The stick may look like a cigarette, it's everything but a cigarette. Uh, the, and the differentiation starts with the tobacco, which has been specifically designed to work in this device. If you take a normal cigarette and you put in this, it in this device, it's not gonna work, okay? 
Uh, the, the, the product is designed so that if consumers want, can get back-to-back -back usage, not just one stick. They don't need to recharge the device to get the second session or a third session if that's what they want. And then we offer a complete flavor range. We started in Japan, so in Japan we have a couple of strongly mentholated versions, but as we go around the world, we are extending the range. Okay, now, so a nice, kind of cute, easy to use, high performing product. Whenever you get to new products, you have to do a lot of science to, to understand how they work and what they do. And so as you've seen from my colleagues, we are doing a lot of science too on this product. We have done a lot of science. So I want to share with you what we have learned. So, okay, people have been talking a lot about temperature. Glow works at a temperature that is below 250 degrees. This is the temperature range where we are at. And as you can see on the right side, those are some simple, simple scans of what comes out in the emissions. The, the smoke coming out from glow is much, much simpler versus the smoke coming out from a cigarette. Notice that I'm talking here about the vapor. I'm not talking about risk. Okay, so we have a cleaner vapor. That's a good start, okay? What's in this vapor? So we have characterized this vapor and our data show that we got significant reduction of toxicants in this vapor versus cigarettes. Uh, here you got different clusters of toxic, toxicants from, from, from the WHO to the FDA 18, to the Health Canada 44 and so on and so on. Consistently, the vapor in glow is not only simpler, but is also a lot cleaner. Again, a good place where to be. Next. Uh, as we said, Japan consumers and all consumers really worry about what's happening around them when they smoke. So we want to characterize what's happening to the air in a room, in a place where glow is used. And also in this case, we found that the air is a lot cleaner. Okay, so this is one of the test methods we use. We use many. This is an example where we go and measure particle mass in the air. You see the air is pretty dirty when people smoke cigarettes in a closed environment. It's much, much cleaner with glow. And then, of course, the air, the fabrics, the, the hands, everything is less smelly, okay? So big, big reduction in odor. With odor here, we mean stink, smell. And this is, by the way, a really, really important area that consumers are playing back to us. Uh, we talk a lot about harm reduction, which is, of course, the potential for harm reduction with these products is, is extremely important. But there is a whole set of benefits that consumers are getting, and they motivate them to use these products. Okay. Then, you know, now we've talked a lot about the vapor, and now we start to try to assess what this vapor does. And so we, like others, have done on GLOW a lot of in vitro testing, comparing the vapor to cigarettes and using a whole range of classical endpoints. There again, we see either no response or very low response, depending on the endpoint that you, that you use. So, so far so good. Big improvement versus cigarettes in these in vitro studies. Then, we have done quite a lot of what we call system science, where we started to see what kind of genes get expressed by cells when they get disturbed by cigarettes or when they get uh, um, exposed to the vapor from glow, and you can see that the response when they get exposed by, uh, to glow is much, much lower versus when they get exposed to cigarettes. So again, positive indicators. So, so far, uh, encouraging science. What we're going to do uh, next, actually what we are doing now, because of course we have talked a lot about emissions, okay, are these emissions simpler? Yes. Are they cleaner? Yes. Do they generate le less response in in vitro tests? Yes. But then what happens? You know, how do the, these emissions get in your body? What do we learn from an exposure standpoint? We have got in progress quite a few clinical studies. In fact, we are juggling now with seven different clinical studies. And we're just beginning to get uh, the results. We will be reporting on that. And then also we will be conducting soon risk studies. And these are longer term studies. We cannot conduct 20 year studies here, but what we are doing are longer term studies where we observe, we try to look at biomarkers that may give us any indication of the actual risk uh, of these products. So 
uh, while the harm reduction assessment of GLOW is far from complete, because there's a lot more clinical work that we need to do, what we have learned on the emissions is pretty encouraging. And then, of course, with all these devices, if any of you thought for a moment that it's simple to, to develop these products, there is plenty of other compliance work that we need to do, whether it's for TBD or for many regulations. This is just an example of all the other regulations that GLOW will comply with in some of the countries, but there's more than that. Electronic cigarettes need to comply with some of these standards too, uh, to make sure that consumers are using safe products uh, from, a, you know, from a device standpoint. So that's pretty much our story on GLOW, um, and thank you very much for letting me share this. Questions? So, uh, questions?